everybody, it's Mitch again with my 1925 Ford Model T and today what I thought we'd take a look at is the coil boxes and uh, how they work and um, basically uh, how to set them up if you buy a new set they're, um, they, uh, they have been known to be out of adjustment when they're, even when they're brand new so I'll also be showing you in this video how to actually set the um, set the spark gap on your coil boxes and get the correct current output so we'll be looking at a coil box tester and uh, yeah <clears throat> let's get uh, stuck into it let's have a look uh, in the cab and uh, find out uh, a little bit more about coil boxes okay so this is the coil box um, now my car um, as you're probably know already is a 1925 Model T so the coil box is actually located underneath the dashboard on this model um, on the earlier models so pre-1916 so the, in other words the brass era cars the coil box it was actually mounted uh, on the dash and instead of having a key you had a coil box switch so um, so you literally just turn the ignition on and off in, but uh, with the with the, uh, the later model uh, T's, they came with a key, the ignition switch was mounted on the dash as you can see, and the coil box um, underneath. Principles exactly the same, the four coil boxes are located uh, inside this housing. Um, the only other difference is that on, 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 this, uh, on later model T's, the coil box was made of metal, and it was made of wood on the earlier ones. Now these are um, actually what we call uh, trembler coils and that uh, familiar buzzing sound that you can hear when the ignition is switched on is those uh, coils actually um, is those coils actually buzzing so you look, listen when I turn on the ignition up here to battery you can hear the coils buzzing so we'll just pop this open so that you can have a look inside open the clips and I'm trying to do this with one handed so bear with me take the cover off let's get this wire out of the way okay so you can see there's the uh, four coil boxes Okay, um, <clears throat> forgive me for the uh, the crudeness of this um, of the setup here. I've just got a fluorescent lamp on the bench there, so I've got a bit of light. But uh, bear with me; it's uh, it's all a work in progress. Um, okay, so what we've got here, this is the standard um, Model T uh, coil box, and you have four of those, one for each cylinder. <laughs> camera to, uh, to, to zoom out on this. Uh, what we have is, I'll find something to point with, what we have here is uh, in here this is where the actual uh, spark gap is. So those two pieces in there, so actually if I use my finger you can just about see the, the spark gap as I open and close it there. <clears throat> so that's the spark gap. Now inside here you've got your uh, you've got your coils inside the box and that buzzing sound that you hear is actually this component moving up and down this paddle moving up and down very very quickly and you'll get a, a spark jumping that gap which I'll show you in a moment. Now a Model T uh, uh, coil box um, is supposed to uh, when it's working properly should be running at 1.3 amps or thereabouts not a good idea to be any less and not doesn't really do you any good to be any more. This is a uh, coil box tester and basically what happens is you take your coil box, you line up these two contacts and also the contact on the bottom there with the contacts in the tester. Oh, forgive me for the uh, bad camera work here, I'm trying to do this with uh, one hand. So you put the coil box in there like that you hook it up to a, a 6 volt power source, their Model T runs on 6 volts, so this is, a, this is my spare um, battery for my Model T, so 6 volts, lead acid battery, connect up your terminals like so, and then simply 
switch it on. Okay, now you've seen nothing's happened. So basically, and you can see in there, there's no contact. So just make, if it doesn't work, just basically push the cord box in there until it uh, makes contact. I'll just swap hands here. I might actually have to hold it in there. There we go. There we go. And you can see it. I'm going to in there. You can see it sparking. And you can also see the current. Oops, that's lost contact there. There we go. So that's probably a bit too much current on that one at the moment, actually. That one's actually reading about, uh, what was that, about 1.8 amps, which is probably a little bit too much. It'll still work like that, but there is the possibility of, uh, <coughs> of, of double sparking, which, which, which you don't want, because then you end up with pre-ignition problems and things like that. And at the same time, you don't want it uh, producing not enough current, otherwise the engine won't even fire properly. So, so the way we adjust the uh, coil box, if it does need adjustment, this particular coil box is, uh, <coughs> is is putting out too much current at the moment, so what we actually want to do, this little tab on the top here, it looks a bit crude I know, but what, the way you actually adjust it is you actually bend this piece here. And you bend it up or down depending on whether you want more or less uh, current. Um, and basically this one needs to be bent, you can see that one, it's uh, it, it, it's been bent upwards to give more current. What it would need to actually have done is to actually bend it down a little bit. Let's see if I can find a pair of pliers and we'll give that a go. Just bend that down a little bit. I don't want to do it too much. Let's bend it a little bit more. Okay, put that back in there and we'll give it another try. Put it against this battery, it might stay put. There we go. There we go. So that's now about, that's about right, maybe. About 1.4 amps, there about. So that's about 1.4, so that's that's close enough. It, it, it doesn't need to be exact. 1.3 amps is the optimum. And I got that down to 1.4 from 1.8. And you saw I didn't have to, didn't have to adjust it very much either. Now I'll just switch this overhead lamp off for a minute. And then I can show you the actual <coughs> spark gap, which as I, sh as I pointed out there, let's try and get the camera to focus on the right thing. Uh, isn't autofocus a wonderful thing? There we go, let's give that a go. And there you can see the spark. There we go. So when I switch it off, it stops. And this, if I can get my finger in here somewhere, there, this is the part that moves. And that's what gives you your spark. Okay, and what we've also got on this unit, if I just take this cover off, is a spark plug tester. So what you can do is you attack, you put your spark plug in here, and actually bear with me a moment, I'll see if I can find a spare one. Okay, so this is a Model T spark plug, uh, Champion number 25. Um, you can use Champion X's, uh, a friend of mine, um, has had uh, has some good results with Champion X. Um, this particular one is just a uh, a modern reproduction of uh, of the original T plugs. Um, the proper ones you can actually uh, dismantle them. The ones I've got in the car at the moment can be dismantled and uh, for cleaning purposes. That way you don't have to throw away the plug and buy a new one just because it's clogged up with carbon. Okay, so what we're going to do? <coughs> all, all we do with this is pop it in the tester. Give me a second, I'll put the camera down.
Okay, so here's the <coughs> spark plug in the tester. We've got the coil box in there to provide the um, to provide the uh, to the spark. Connect up to the battery, and now if I switch it on, we should. There we go. We have a spark. Working perfectly. Oh, this bloody focus. There we go. So we get a spark up here on the core box. And that gives us a spark at the plug. And that is how you test. <coughs> excuse me. And that is how you test your coil boxes. Very uh, useful device to have. It's very difficult to try and um, unless you're very experienced with these things, it is rather difficult to uh, get these boxes working properly just by by ear or just by just by sight alone. The coil box tester is a lifesaver, um, and they're brilliant for um, for recalibrating your uh, coils. Not that they go out of adjustment much, but it is. Uh, um, it is good for setting them when you first uh, purchase new ones because sometimes they're not quite set, not quite set right. Um, so the uh, the box, the coil box tester is uh, is a lifesaver in that instance. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Uh, if you've got any questions, you can either pop them in the comments below or send me an email. Um, don't forget to check out the website, which I'll put at the end of this video, and it's in the description as well. Check out the website. And also uh, join the Facebook group if you haven't already. Um, there is a uh, enthusiasts uh, Facebook group for the Model T, um, which again I'll put a link in the description for you to have a look at. Alrighty, till next time. Have fun. Catch you later.